Hey guys, I recently spoke to someone who lost $400,000 on a joint venture real estate transaction. In this video, I'm going to share with you that story and the things that he did wrong to make sure that when you're ever going to enter into a JV agreement, you won't make these same mistakes. All right, let's get started. Okay, so what happened here? Well, this is one of those scenarios that you sit back and you look at it and you go, oh, well, that's a red flag. You shouldn't have done that. That makes sense. But the reality is, is that I've seen this happen time and time again, that when you're considering getting into a joint venture with someone else, a lot of times what you're going to find is you've got this investor out there that you've known for a while, or maybe you just met, and they have a great idea on how they're going to go out and make a lot of money with real estate, or they found a deal, a great deal. And so they're coming to you and they're saying, listen, in order to put this deal together, I need a little cash and you've got the cash. And so we'll split the proceeds, we'll split the rents, whatever we're going to do with that. And you think, all right, sounds great. I know you and you seem to be a decent operator. Uh, I'll move forward with that. So you then determine that because you trust them, you're going to give them $400,000. And the deal is you'd split the profits from this deal 50-50. Well, in order to actually provide some protection because this person has heard about limited liability companies and why you should set them up, a side LLC is set up where each of you is listed as a partner in this limited liability company. So this is what happened here. This individual, number one, loaned, or not loaned, provided $400,000 to individual number two, so individual number two could go out and buy this property. They use conventional financing here. Now. They set up an LLC and individual number one was a 50% member in that limited liability company. But here's what happened. Individual two kept the property in their own name. They never actually moved the property into the LLC. So individual number one was a 50% owner in an LLC that didn't even own an asset. But he didn't know that because he didn't check on that. So individual number two is out there running this property as a short-term rental for a year and a half and generates about $500,000 in income. I know I was blown away when I heard about that. But individual number two stated that in order to generate that $500,000, that this individual had to spend $750,000 in all kinds of trumped up charges, made up charges associated with that property. So at the end of the year, when they, when they figured it all out, they were negative 250K, according to individual number two. Well, individual number one decides, I want to sell this. I'm tired of this. I, can't, I don't want to be involved in an investment. I just want to get my money back. So they sold the property. And on the sale of the property, they generated $250,000 in gain. Well, individual number two took the $250,000 of gain and gave zero back money to individual number one. Individual two said, hey, I was out 250 and running the property. I'm just making myself whole. We made no profit on the deal. You lost 400K. So here's the problem, right? It just, this was an error, a screw up from day one because individual number one decided to fund a deal to buy a piece of property that was going to go into this person's name, individual number two's name. So individual number one sitting over here on the sidelines and, and they have no protection of this deal because after that property closes in individual number two's name, even though you have a limited liability company set up over here, how do you compel them to transfer the property into the LLC? If they don't do it, then immediately what you need to do is file suit, right? Hey, you didn't transfer it in. The nature of the transactions that you were going to do this, I funded the down payment. It's supposed to go in the LLC or you need to put my name on as tenants in common. You see, titles in the individual two's name, there's no way for you to compel them to do that. And see, that's the problem with joint ventures when you're buying residential real estate, because oftentimes what you have is an individual is gonna go on the loan and in order to qualify. And so when that property closes, it has to be taken in their name if they're the one on the loan. Uh, many times with joint venture partners, we don't want both parties on there. And if you don't have a longstanding trust relationship built with this investor, then you have no guarantee that they're going to follow through with their obligations. And people say, well, I'll put together an agreement. They, they're bound to do this. There's nothing that binds them. You're deluding yourself if you think having an agreement in place is going to get individual two to transfer that property into the LLC. What you'll have to do is file a lawsuit to compel that action to take place. And that's never gonna win. You're never gonna win 
in that situation because you're going to have to be paying attorney's fees and it's going to kill the entire deal from the outset. So that is a huge risk that you face. Now, obviously, if you buy the property directly in the LLC because it's a commercial property or it's a commercial loan, not a big deal. Or you're, you're using private funding to put it together, then that's fine. You can do this because property is going to be held, title will be held here, and you're both members in this LLC. Not a big deal. So what should they have done in, in, to solve this particular problem that is go into this relationship that protects the interest of individual number one? Well, it's really quite simple. And the way that works is that if you're going to, to buy this property, here's individual number two, you're gonna, they're gonna, we know we're going to take title in individual two's name. We need to structure this here as a loan to individual number two, okay? We need to structure it so there's a promissory note from individual number one to individual number two, and a subsequent deed of trust issued back to individual number one. Because that deed of trust needs to be recorded after individual two has closed on the property. Now, you might be wondering, well, how can you issue a deed of trust on a piece of property you don't own? Well, it's simple. You do not set it up to be dated. They sign it, they just don't date it until they've actually closed. And that's when individual number one will, will, will date that document. So we make it effective on that date. And then individual number one will record that. So you do not rely on the second individual to do this. Individual number one will record the deed of trust because individual number one has provided the financing, loaned the money. So I'm going to hold that document, meaning this. I'm not giving the individual two of my money until I get the, him to sign a promissory note and I get that deed of trust, all right? Once I get that, then I can go and I feel protected. So if they would have put that 400K on that property, what would have happened in my scenario? Well, if they had sold, when individual two sold the property, $250,000 in gain was received on the sale, that title would have reached out to individual number one because they were a secured creditor. And they would have said to them, how much is outstanding on that $400,000 note? At that point in time, individual number one could have said, hey, it's 400K. So all those proceeds would have been paid here. Now, obviously, they still lost money, but at least they walked away partially whole. Whereas the way they structured it, individual number one lost everything in the example that I, or the story I just provided to you. So what about that limited liability company down there? How do we get them to move the property into the LLC? Well, again, that all comes down to that, you know, trying to put together an agreement to force them to take action. You have no way of ensuring that this individual will put that property into the LLC absent, again, just like the deed of trust, preparing a deed ahead of time. So if you know that we're, the money's gone hard on that property, there's going you're going to close on it, I would have individual number two prepare a deed, not dated, that would transfer the property into that LLC. Now, the only issue with that, of course, uh, in doing that is could always come down to intent. Hey, how do you transfer property you don't own? I mean, that is a legal issue, but the, the, the protection for you is that it prevents individual number two from doing stuff with the property, right? Selling it to someone else and you not knowing about it. Yeah, you get paid uh, if you, as long as you got the deed of trust in place, but what I'm trying to, to, to set up for you here is a mechanism so that you'll stay involved or you'll stay informed of what's, tr what's transpiring with that asset and you're not gonna be on the outside. Now, could individual number two keep collecting all the rental proceeds and making fake invoices? Yes, you could do that. But then again, if they're not paying you on the interest on the loan, you could then move to foreclose on that property and go after and try to collect on those rents themselves because assumedly you put that together inside of your deed of trust that you have a right to collect the rents if you're not being paid. So these are things that you ought to consider when it comes to entering into a joint venture deal, that these are fraught with fraud. In my experience of over 25 years of working with real estate investors and doing joint ventures, very few of them ever work out unless the parties have a long-standing relationship because there's always violated expectations. And this loan strategy is just one way to put these deals together. Of course, there are other strategies out there as well. When it comes to putting together a joint venture deal, you just have to figure out what's best for your individual situation and make sure you document it and you get your interest somehow tied to that property so you're protected. 
Hey guys, if you found this video is informative, be sure to hit that like button. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, well, now is your opportunity to do that. Be sure to subscribe and you'll get notified of every new video that I release on a weekly basis. Take care.